Hey there Star Seekers, my name's Luke and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be checking out Non-Guns Doppelganger Edition. It's a dark roguelike action platformer game where you play as a headless hero and have to blast your way through procedurally generated dungeons full of grotesque monsters and bosses, chaining your kills together to rack up your score and upgrade your character. The game's punishing difficulty is not the only thing you're going to have to contend with either, as the obscurity of its world and gameplay mechanics only add to the challenge, and you're going to have to try and make sense of them if you want to last more than 5 minutes in its brutal dungeons. So let's now dive into this review and take a look at what's on offer, and don't forget to like this video if it helps you out, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content and want to see more. So Nongun's Doppelganger Edition is actually an upgraded version of the original game. It adds a new arena mode and two player co-op mode, though I was only able to play the game in single player, and it also makes the game available for the first time on consoles. You're able to pick the game up from the UK Switch eShop where it's priced at £13.49 or from the US eShop for $14.99 and it's also available on Xbox, PlayStation and Steam. Now upon first starting the game, you're taken through a brief tutorial level which runs you through the game's basic controls via some handy little images, and they teach us that we can move with a left analog stick or d-pad, can jump with the B button, and fire our weapon by either tapping or holding the R trigger. We also learn how to perform a dodge roll by hitting the A button, and this can be used both on the ground and in the air to avoid damage from spikes, enemies or the projectiles. Now this is about as much help as you're getting with a tutorial, and once you've completed this and climbed your way up to the surface, you're pretty much left on your own with much still left to be explained. Obscurity actually plays a key role in non-guns and you're given no direction on where you should go or what you should be doing, which could prove to be pretty frustrating if you're not one for puzzling things out on your own. So your first task is to actually explore the hub area where you'll find many different features, the uses of which are not immediately apparent, but heading to the far left of the screen you'll actually find a book on a pedestal containing a bunch of random drawings, and these do actually explain a lot of the game's mechanics in their own ambiguous way. Part of the game's challenge and fun does come from deciphering the world of non-guns and discovering how each gameplay mechanic works, but for the sakes of this review I'm going to have to go into details on these mechanics, and from here on out there will be some spoilers relating to them. Now non-guns doppelganger edition has two modes for you to play. The first of these being the standard roguelike dungeon crawler mode found in the original, which we'll get onto in a moment, and the second is the all new arena mode, where you're enclosed in a small single room arena and have to defeat all of the enemies and then push a switch to move on to the next wave of enemies. While it's not the main course, I actually thought arena mode was quite a cool addition, and the room and enemies actually change around every wave you play, but I didn't get very far in it and lost all of my items and points on death, so I'm not entirely sure what the reward is for playing this mode. You're able to get to the arena by heading to the church on the far left of the hub, or to the main dungeon by heading to the far right into this huge scurry looking building next to the guidebook, but thankfully you don't actually have to do these long walks every time you die, as both modes can also be quickly accessed by walking to the left or to the right of the white area that you respawn in. Now the main dungeon of non-guns is randomly generated each time you enter it, and its current layout is displayed as a mini-map in the top right corner of the screen. The dungeon itself is constructed using rooms with set layouts, and while there is some good variety to these rooms, the enemy placements in them appear to be identical whenever I encountered them, which does somewhat reduce the challenge and variety of each playthrough. Now your main objective in this dungeon crawling mode is to work your way through the rooms, making your way to the red skull room on the minimap where you'll face the end of level boss. If you happen to die at any point in your run, you'll lose everything that you carry and your score will be reset to zero, but unlike most roguelikes, you don't actually have to complete a full run to walk away with your treasures, and some rooms feature windows which you can actually escape the dungeon through, though you will have to start the dungeon over when you re-enter it. Now the game's bosses are incredibly tough, so you're going to want to spend some time gathering collectibles and weapons to improve your chances of beating them. 
While Nung Guns doesn't lock you into rooms or force you into killing all of the enemies in them like some roguelikes do, it does reward you with points for doing so, and killing enemies quickly one after another will build your combo meter seen in the bottom left corner, which then multiplies the points you earn by its value. These points essentially act as the game's currency, and they can be spent on items and weapons which can be obtained from a number of different locations. Firstly, you have shop rooms within the dungeons, identified by a white skull on the map, and these usually sell 4 different items, costing various amounts of points. Secondly, you have the vampire vendor who can be found in a building in the hub area who sells you a random selection of weapons which are all generally pretty expensive. And finally, you have the impressive sacrificial altar located in the centre of the hub area. Here you can donate points to fill up the outlines of weapons and skulls, and once full you then get the choice of either obtaining the weapon or item, or donating more points to fill them up a second and third time, granting you more powerful versions of the items. Now when it comes to weapons, these are all pretty self-explanatory. You have things like pistols, submachine guns, assault rifles and shotguns, as well as a couple of melee weapons, and each one comes with a set amount of ammo, with the weapon being destroyed when the ammo is depleted. I thought there was some decent variety to these weapons, with different weapons performing better against different enemies, and the game lets you carry multiple weapons at once which you can switch between with the L button. Now aside from weapons, there are also three other kinds of items you can acquire in non-guns, but unlike weapons, their use and effect on the character isn't immediately obvious. The first of these item types are skulls, of which there appears to be nine in the game, each of them represented by a different animal, and equipping a skull grants you a special power which can be activated with the L button. You'll have to actually do some experimenting to fully understand each skull's ability, but these grant things like a double jump ability, the ability to teleport out of harm's way, and the ability to build turrets which fire on nearby enemies. The next kind of item card that you'll find are passive stat cards, and these can actually be very confusing at first glance, with the guidebook providing a not so helpful image on how they work. Basically, each card comes with one or two icons on them, indicating the stats that they improve, and the numbers displayed in the bottom left and right hand corners of the card indicate the percentage of these improvements. This whole mechanic is made even more confusing by the fact that none of the icons are actually explained, but these include things like your max health, fire rate, bullet size, crit chance and movement speed. Now the final type of cards are warrior minion cards, and these appear as different body parts which can be collected and used to build a minion which can then be sent out to gather additional items for you. The mausoleum building in which you construct the minion can also be used to store any of your weapon, skull and minion cards, and this stops them from degrading over time and eventually being destroyed, and enables you to build up a decent collection of them before heading into a boss fight. One final point about the cards is that you can actually sacrifice any of them to recover a portion of your health, and I thought this was a very interesting gameplay mechanic. Now I found the combat in the game to be pretty enjoyable. Successfully chaining together kills and building that combo meter requires plenty of skill, and while you can play the game at breakneck speed once you've mastered the control scheme, there is just as many opportunities to take it slow and steady and pick off enemies one by one just to be safe. Each unique enemy in the game presents its own dangers and challenges, and you're going to have to learn how to exploit the weaknesses of each of them to survive the gauntlet of rooms which lay ahead of you, and I thought there was some good variety to the game's enemies, with each of them being grotesquely beautiful in their own right. Now one thing that I did find a little frustrating though, was the fact that you're only able to shoot left or right during normal movement. You can't actually shoot downwards, and shooting upwards can only be done whilst performing a slide manoeuvre, and this makes it pretty difficult to hit enemies above you, which was no doubt the intention with this mechanic. I also felt that the game's control scheme in general wasn't the most user friendly with the binding of its buttons, and while the PC version does have the option to rebind the controls, for some reason this is being left out of the console version, which I found a bit baffling. So overall I found Nonguns to be a pretty good roguelike, though its general difficulty, control scheme and the obscurity of its mechanics do place it on the more challenging end of the spectrum, meaning it's not the most accessible game in the genre. It has some very interesting gameplay mechanics which, while simple, do put a unique spin on the standard roguelike formula, and I quite enjoyed the general gameplay loop, though I found the effects of weapons and items to be much less adventurous, and as a result, less fun than those found in games like The Binding of Isaac or Undermine. 
Now visually I thought Non Guns was absolutely stunning. I thought the pixel art was fantastic, I loved the grim atmosphere of its environments and the grotesque aesthetics of its creatures, all of which were very well animated and generally the game's performance was pretty good, though I did encounter some significant frame rate drops in rooms featuring large numbers of the projectile shooting enemies, though these rooms were few and far between. On the audio side we get some nice sound effects for the weapons and enemies and the game's soundtrack is also pretty awesome, having a similar feel to the Binding of Isaac soundtrack. In all, Non Guns is a fun but challenging roguelike and if you're up for a bit of self punishment then I highly recommend checking the game out. When it comes to my own personal rating, I'm going to be giving Non Guns 3 out of 5 stars. The simple gameplay mechanics make Non Guns easy to pick up and play, but the obscure nature of them does make them appear more complex than they actually are, and making sense of it all may be too much work for some people. And that's about it for this review of Non Guns on the Nintendo Switch. Make sure to hit that like button if this review helped you out, let me know your opinions on the game and what your favourite roguelikes are in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest reviews and content. For now though, I want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.